Assalamu alaikum. This is Seja. I'm here with Soha. Hey, this is Soha. Um, and we're the, uh, co the founders of Anasi Decor. Um, we're super passionate about making Ramadan and Eid exciting and helping families uh, form lasting traditions around Ramadan and Eid, inshallah. Uh, so our you mission, want to pull yeah. up the PowerPoint? <laughs> Yeah. So our mission is actually to make Islamic holidays mainstream and accessible um, in this country and in the West in general. Um, so we're here yeah. today to offer some tips and advice and uh, to make this Ramadan the best one yet, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, we have a small PowerPoint prepared for you guys. We can switch to that really quick. Yeah, so Saja, did you want to start? Yeah, so awesome. Thank you for pulling that up. Mm -hmm. So um, as we all know, uh, this Ramadan is going to be definitely different than any other Ramadan we've ever had. And um, it's, you know, no surprise. We all know that, you know, Tarawih has been canceled and Juma prayer has been canceled and all the family gatherings and, you know, iftars that we're used to are going to be canceled this year. Um, we just have to try to make this the best Ramadan we've ever had. And however, that doesn't mean that Ramadan cannot be the best. Yeah. So, I mean, let's reflect a little bit on what Ramadan is really about, you know, so there's the spiritual discipline aspect of it. So obviously we're fasting from dawn until sunset performing extra prayers, going to Taraweeh, we're trying to increase how much Quran we're reading. Um, and obviously we're also really like focusing on that relationship with God and trying to strengthen that connection with God and to increase our Iman, inshallah. Um, and there's the aspect of performing uh, extra good deeds, charity, helping others, uh, making sure to help people in need um, and increasing our donations and um, giving back to charity. But, you know, if you really think about it, those are all still things that we can still do this year, inshallah. We just need to get a little bit, a little bit more creative on how we do them. Um, so, you know, if we look at the spiritual uh, and dis spiritual discipline and the nurt nurturing our relationship with God aspect, you know, while we may not be able to go to the masjid this Ramadan, we can still create really special spaces in our home that provide that, you know, spiritual boost, inshallah. Um, so one thing that we can do is to dedicate a special area of the home um, as your home musallah. So, you know, you can, that will be a great area for you to pray together as a family um, and also take advantage of this time to encourage your kids to, uh, if they're old enough, to start leading family prayers. Um, you know, also that encourages them to memorize more Quran, more Quran so that they're able to lead longer prayers, inshallah. Yeah, um, so, um, um, so it has a cute little picture of a family masala that, you know, it's a great idea to get the family to bond and to connect and, you know, grow, grow closer, closer to Allah together. So I think that's a great idea. Um, another cute idea we have is like having a Quran reading corner for the kids. So um, having like a cute little area in the house or a corner in the house that's dedicated for them where you have like the Quran and Ramadan related books that encourages them to read and memorize Quran and, you know, um, have that special area in the house where they can just zone everything out and just focus on Ramadan and the essence of what Ramadan is really about. And it also makes them feel like, you know, um, like the, we're so used to going to the masjid and we're so used to having those like activities during Ramadan that this can be an activity as a substitute, instead of going to the masjid, you can, you know, go to that corner or go to that cute little tent or whatever area that you come up with for your kids and, you know, add that into your routine throughout the day. And just to add to that, you know, this is a great way to just keep a little bit of sense of normalcy and, and bring a little bit of that, you know, with everything changing in the kids routine, especially, it's nice to at least have, you know, we're still going to Taraweeh. Yes, it may not be at the Jana or the mosque, but you know, we're still having a little bit of 
that tradition uh, still present in our families. And, you know, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It could be very simple, just a few prayer rugs and, you know, very simple setup. But as long as you have that intention and you dedicate that area as your musalla, that, you know, that serves the purpose. And it really gets the kids very excited. And it's not just for the kids. Um, it's also important to introduce for the adults as well. So having a little area where you can just have a couple of diffusers or candles with essential oils and, you know, every family member in the, in the household can have their own little Quran to know where they're at in the Quran as they're reading throughout Ramadan. So um, not just focusing on the kids, but as the adults as well of dedicating that corner in the house for you as well, where, you know, you're, like I said previously, you're kind of just stepping out from your day-to-day -day routine and just dedicating that time in that corner for, for you know, growing, um, growing your connection with Allah. SubhanAllah. And, yeah, inshallah. And honestly, it's, it's just a great way to really um, unplug. You know, we're so used to being so attached to our phones and I'm guilty of even like reading put on my phone, but um, you know, it's also nice to maybe just get each member of the family their own mushaf or Quran and they can um, use it to, to read instead of being on an iPad or an iPhone. So in order to be able to really um, unplug and have, a, have the opportunity to have like a stronger connection with Allah, inshallah. Um, you know, another thing that you can do, and this is something that um, I think it, it just, it's a great way to encourage um, uh, each other to read more Quran is to start perhaps like a Quran reading group on WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever other social media platform that you're comfortable with. Um, and it's just a great way to encourage yourself and others in a group to read Quran um, on a daily basis a little bit more frequently in Ramadan. So maybe you can assign one chapter of the Quran each day. And once, uh, you know, whoever's done, they can just say Alhamdulillah on the chat group. And so that will kind of you feel more accountable and you feel, you know, a little bit more motivated to do more reading. Um, and, you know, one thing I wanted to add to that is it's really important right now to just kind of approach Quran, um, to, to set an intention right now going into Ramadan and to um, how much Quran you want to read. So, you know, if in the past you've been able to almost finish the Quran during Ramadan, maybe your intention can be like, it can be this time to say, I'm going to read the whole thing at least once. And if you've read it, you know, once or twice in the past, maybe you can increase that, but go in with that intention um, before Ramadan starts to really, um, shall I get the most benefit out of it and to keep you motivated throughout. Yeah, I definitely like to approach Ramadan kind of like a New Year's resolution where it's like this Ramadan, I set my goals out to see how I want to become a better Muslim and set my goals you know, inshallah to build that habit over Ramadan and then continue after. So when I set my goals for Ramadan, it's kind of like a new year's resolution where it's like, okay, what do I want to accomplish this Ramadan? What, you know, good deeds do I want to bring into my life or what, you know, um, do I want to start practicing praying my sunnah prayers with my, you know, my fard prayers so that, you know, inshallah, I continue that after. So definitely like, I like what you said, Soha, about, you know, intentions and setting your goals and, you know, um, having a game plan for Ramadan, because I think it's very important to, you know, to enter Ramadan with the right mindset where it's like, this is what I want to accomplish. Yeah, it makes a big difference, inshallah. And I think God also helps us to reach those goals um, when we kind of come in with that uh, before even starting, inshallah. And so, you know, we, we want to, you know, obviously a lot of us or all of us are, um, stuck at home. And so we want to make sure that we preserve that spirit of Ramadan, which is a lot more communal. Um, and it really comes down to outlook and perspective. So you're going to get out of, uh, of it what you put in. And it's really important to reframe the situation into something more positive. Um, and that will, inshallah, make it positive. Uh, because outlook um, and perspective really make a huge difference when it comes to that. Just, just the way that you think about it, um, it really affects how you feel and how it, you know, how, what you remember from it as well. And so it's important to be excited and create a very festive atmosphere at your home. You know, 
this Ramadan specifically, we're going to be spending more time at home than ever before. So let's make our homes full of that spirit of Ramadan, inshallah. Um, decorate your home, make a big deal about it for yourself and for your kids. Because remember, they're watching us. You know, this, this is a, a very interesting time for them. Um, and they're going through a lot of firsts, as we all are. And so the way that we handle this, um, is going to be reflected upon how they handle stressful situations in the future as well. So let's make this as, you know, let's, let's get excited. Let's make this a big deal at our homes, inshallah. And in order to be able to feel that uh, spirit a, a lot more, inshallah. Yeah, so um, creating that atmosphere doesn't have to be complicated. It can be something that's homemade decor or something that's store-bought. You know, whatever it is that works for your family, um, just make it exciting, make it special. Um, like Suha said, your kids are watching. You're kind of whatever you vibe off of to them is what they're going to pick up. So definitely, you know, having that atmosphere and creating that mood in the house is, you know, very essential for when going into Ramadan to help your kids get into the spirit and get into the, you know, or like the Ramadan spirit. Mm -hmm. And like, again, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. It can be homemade decor or store-bought store -bought decor. Um, whatever it is that you choose to do, go all out and dedicate different corners and, and try to, you know, make the whole house feel really exciting and festive, inshallah. And it's really important especially nowadays to involve the whole family. So if you have small children, get those children involved in where they wanna put their decor, how they wanna set up, how they want their home to look during this time, where they wanna put lights up or whatever it is that they're doing. Um, it just becomes a family activity and something to remember and cherish inshallah um, going forward in the future. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, I, Saj, are you able to see the PowerPoint? Yeah, you're on the next slide, so, right? Mm -hmm. Starting family traditions. Yeah, <laughs> this is actually a really good opportunity. To I get excited over this one. <laughs> so yeah, so, um, so um, for those that have kids, it's really important to involve the kids and making them feel like they're a part of Ramadan since we're all together at home. And, you know, I hate to say stuck at home more, just stay at home stay together. That, you know, um, just involve safe at home, yeah, so involve the kids in preparing and setting up for iftar if they if you're making dinner you know have them set the table and have them you know be a part of cooking or whatever it takes to you know what if they're fasting you know everyone's excited to break their fast so involve them in that and you know that can be a family activity that they're doing together um another great one that works for my kids because they're younger um she's actually asking about the ramadan and as she now is to have a playlist and you know get that going get the get the energy and the happy you know, atmosphere going, play the anashid, play the songs and, you know, remind them there's a lot of great songs out there that, you know, talk about the essence of Ramadan and what Ramadan's all about. So have that playlist and, you know, you can play it, you know, play it, let it play through, you know, just specify which songs you want and have that ready, you know, throughout Ramadan. Um, another great one is putting Quran an hour before iftar, if that's like a tradition that works for your family or, you know something that you guys or if it's after iftar whatever like whatever it works for your family so um just starting new traditions and having cute little things that your family sticks to on a day-to-day -day basis um another cute thing would be to do is to have a tradition around suhoor and fajr so um like i previously said about preparing or setting up for iftar maybe for fajr you guys can have like a cute little homemade door hanger that says you know wake me up for suhoor. If they're not, they don't want to wake up for suhoor, the kids can flip it over on the other side and says, wake me up for fajr. That works great for the older kids just to get them excited for, you know, waking up in the morning and, you know, having that family tradition to look forward to. Um, Suha has a great, my kids are still younger, so Suha has a great advent calendar where um, she does a countdown to, to read. So each, you know, advent if so, if you want to talk about that, because I know you're great with the, the kids. My daughter's still three, so she's not she's not doing that yet. You know, it's it's just it gets them really excited. So every day they get to you know we'll have like small little good deeds that they can do uh, throughout the day. And once um, you know around iftar time, once they've done that, then they get a little present because my kids are a little bit um, too young to fast. Um, and so this is just a great way to have them be involved in one the excitement of like, you know, 
what it feels like to look forward to an iftar at the end of the day. So they're looking forward to a little gift. Um, and also uh, just kind of like, oh, look, we have this many days left for Eid. Um, it's just a, a, something that, you know, um, I feel like my kids can take and pass on to their kids, inshallah. And, and I know, you know, Saja had mentioned like putting, putting Quran um, an hour or a, a few minutes before iftar. That's, I remember that's something that I grew up um, with that happening in my household and I cherish that. And it's, you know, those are memories that I, I keep and I love that I'm able to take that tradition and also pass it on to my kids as well. You know, because in the end, um, these Ramadan, Ramadan traditions can be completely new. You, you know, we have the freedom to create our own um, uh, traditions this Ramadan and to have something super special for our family, um, something that they can cherish and that they can continue to do in, in future Ramadans, inshallah. Um, especially this Ramadan, I think it's a great opportunity for us to um, really, you know, focus because we're going to be at home. We're not going to be out to iftar dinners all the time. And so we have the opportunity to really um, take that time, spend it with family and form something that's really uh, personal to our family and, you know, start these great traditions, inshallah, that our kids can pass on. Definitely. So just taking advantage of the extra time with family and you know, um, preparing a list of questions that you want to ask at iftar time to get to know each other better and, you know, spark deep, deeper conversations. So um, just taking advantage of this situation with the whole COVID-19 and, you know, approaching it where, you know, you're going to take advantage of the fact that you're going to have iftar in a closer, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, not closer knit, but like, you know, a cozier atmosphere. So get to know each other. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also just a, a great way to to also get to know your your spouse or your kids on a deeper level, you know, so ask them how they're feeling, ask them, you know, what their day was like, those kinds of things, because I know in most of our lives have, are so busy that we don't always get a chance to sit down and eat dinner together. And so this is an opportunity where we will be eating together um, at least 30 nights uh in that month and so it, it would be just a great way to to really have those deeper conversations and and just to get to know each other on a deeper deeper level as well inshallah um and i mean in the spirit of the you know the communal sp spirit of ramadan um uh yes we can't necessarily be physically with our uh, friends families um and our neighbors, but we can still share that spirit with them. So we can make some small favors um, with a small note and just drop it off in the mailbox uh, or by the doorstep. And that's a great way to to kind of keep the spirit alive, to keep that connection uh, w without breaking the social distancing guidelines as well. Definitely. And it can be super simple. So it can be like a, a very simple dessert. It can be a store-bought dessert. It can be dates. It can be uh, cookies, mamul, whatever. Um, it can even be a small plant and just a very heartfelt message, um, you know, remembering that or like focusing on that spirit of Ramadan. And, and it makes a huge difference, honestly, for us as a person giving to see, you know, their action, the positive reaction from our friends and neighbors, but also um, for our friends and neighbors who, you know, I'm sure I appreciate that gesture as well. And it's especially important to also extend that to our non-Muslim neighbors because, you know, um, as Muslims, it Ramadan is, yes, it's becoming a little bit more, um, you know, known, but a lot of our friends and neighbors that are not Muslim don't really know that it's coming, don't really know that much about it. So this is a great opportunity to introduce them to our holidays in a very sweet um, and you know, uh, as just a very respectful gesture, inshallah. Definitely. So um, I do want to highlight for the non-Muslims, this is a great dawa opportunity to just, you know, write something about Islam or um, what Ramadan is about and, you know, explain to them why we're fasting and what, why this month is so important to us and, you know, extend, ex um, extend that, you know, opportunity to, you know, give dawah to them in a, like Suha said, in a great way where it's not, you know, um, forceful or, you know, very, it's just very in a kind, gentle way. Yeah. And again, you know, obviously we're not going to be having big iftars. We're not going to be, um, you know, doing these um, dinners that we always look forward to in Ramadan. 
But that doesn't mean that we still can't have these um, gatherings in a different way. So one thing that you can do is um, uh, like set the table up as if you are having guests, make sure to dress up um, and come to the iftar table, you know, with that mindset that, yeah, we're coming, we're, this is, this is a special occasion, even if it is just the immediate family. Um, also make sure to get the whole family involved in the cooking and preparing and setting up the table. Um, it's a, it's a great way, an opportunity also as well for people with younger children to get their, their children to learn and to be involved and to learn to, you know, uh, do chores around the house and just see what it takes to get a meal prepared and set up and cleaned up. Um, also, and this is something that I plan to do, uh, is set up virtual iftar parties with your families. So, you know, I already set up my families on Zoom accounts and I'm going to be sending them an iftar Zoom party invitation so we can, you know, be together kind of, um, sharing in the meal, but not necessarily there physically, but at least we're able to have conversations, we're there in, in spirit. And I think that that, you know, this will be, this will be a Ramadan to remember. This will be something that we can look back on and just inshallah remember fondly, fondly and with, you know, uh, good memories. So um, like we mentioned previously, Ramadan is all about, you know, performing good deeds. And this is the month of charity and, you know, doing extra deeds and making sure that we take advantage of the blessings of Ramadan and what, you know, what the potential of our hasanat can be during Ramadan. So check on your friends, check on your loved ones, make sure, you know, those that are converts that are maybe celebrating Ramadan alone or with a household that isn't Muslim and they're practicing Ramadan alone, check in on them, check in on your family, your grandparents, you know, check in on your friends, make sure, like, like so has said previously about the WhatsApp groups, check in on them, see if they're accomplishing their goals and, you know, showing them that you care and that you, you know, you're there for them if they need a talk or a phone call or, you know, um, kind of reassess Ramadan or how it's going for them. So that's a couple of good deeds. We can still do them through Ramadan. We just have to be creative and, you know, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, one minute, I'm going to go pause that real quick. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sorry, my event just went off. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, where was I? So, um, an increase for people in need for the COVID situation. You guys can also do good deeds where it's like, you know, doing a grocery run for your neighbor or for your parents or for your grandparents. So make sure that you're there for them and, you know, you're willing to give a help in hand. Um, Soha knows more about a needy family program. So if you want to go over that. Yeah. And just to like, uh, like reiterate some of the, the points that you mentioned, Saja. Um, yeah, definitely like check in on people that may be celebrating alone. Um, also something that you can do is maybe you can cook a, a larger meal and take part of that and drop it off at your friend or your neighbors or um, an extended family member. And then you guys can get together um, on Zoom or FaceTime or whatever and share in that meal without necessarily being there, but you're both eating together and it's kind of like you're having them over without physically having them over. So that's, you know, another kind of creative way to um, have that, like that communal feel of what Ramadan is about without breaking those social distancing guidelines, inshallah. Um, and, you know, with everything that's happening, a lot more people um, are, have been affected and are in need. And so, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to take advantage of the spirit of charity in Ramadan and to give back. Um, and I know at MIC, there's a couple of programs that are going on uh, currently said so that there's there's the MIC um, needy family program. And then this is this is um, a great way where you can sponsor a family for, for the whole month of Ramadan. They will take care of their, you know, the groceries that they can buy purchase for the whole month in order to be able to um, make iftar. Uh, and also there's the iftar drive through, drive through, which is just a, a really cool way um, or a cool twist on, you know, how in the past we would have like an iftar at MIC or at the different masajid. Um, and obviously we can't have that. So this, this is a great way if, if you'd like to sponsor a night and they will 
purchase the um, the meals from one of the restaurants. So you're supporting restaurants. And then also they people just kind of drive through uh, the MIC, pick up their meal and then continue on and, and have their meal at home. And and it's just a, a great way to, to give back um, without, again, breaking those social distancing uh, guidelines as well. I love that initiative, Michelle. That's, that's awesome. So yeah, so we just want to um, also highlight the mindset that you know you have going into Ramadan. So um, I do want to say you do get what um, you get out what you put in. So going into Ramadan, if you go in with full force and you know high expectations, and you know you have a list of things you want to accomplish, you know the sky's the limit. And depending on what, like how how far you push yourself, you can attain whatever you you know you can manifest whatever you, you know, you desire. So um, going to Ramadan with a positive attitude, then inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easier for you. Um, Ramadan is all about building habits that inshallah you can continue after Ramadan and keep that stamina going. So practicing these acts of worship at home, you know, maybe a, be a blessing in disguise where, you know, that you do have tarawih and these night prayers, but this is maybe a time for us to really feel like okay, we're stepping back from that communal, you know, presence that we go through during Ramadan and really just, you know, connecting with Allah on a deeper level and on, you know, a more private level where, you know, our intentions really come through where it's like, okay, I'm really doing this for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, I'm not doing it for, you know, the community. I'm not doing it for my family. I'm doing it mainly for myself. So building these habits for Ramadan and go in with the mindset of like, inshallah, it's not just for Ramadan, but after Ramadan as well, so. And, you know, just to, to add to that, it, like Saja was saying, you know, it, in Ramadan, it's, you get encouraged and you're like, yes, I'm gonna be praying Fajr every night at the masjid. I'm gonna go to Tarawih and I'm gonna keep that up. But realistically, you know, all of us aren't able to keep that level up. But when we're doing these, um, you know, these acts of worship at home, it actually might be uh, a little bit easier for us to continue that, inshallah. So that, you know, as such, I was saying, that could just be a really great silver lining that we can get out of the situation that we're in currently. Um, you know, again, yeah, this, definitely. Is this Ramadan is <laughs> like one to remember. So we're all going to look back and remember this Ramadan and the whole situation that the whole world is going through. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of fact of you know, realizing how do you want to remember it? Do you want to remember it as a good Ramadan or do you want to remember it as, you know, the most miserable Ramadan you've ever had? So, you know, having that mindset and, you know, making sure this is one to remember and I'm going to, you know, you know, go in with high expectations. And honestly, it, you know, we can, if we go in with that mindset, we can make this our best Ramadan yet, inshallah. Um, and so, just remember that, that it's all about your outlook on it, inshallah. So yeah, Suha and I um, also came up with a couple resources to, you know, offer some help or tips or cute little print free um, freebie printables for everyone if they're interested. So um, we offer a social distancing survival guide for the kids where it's like a daily schedule that helps you break down the day. And um, that to be uh, Ramadan friendly. So it includes suhoor and yeah. includes all of that, inshallah, to help just make it easier for us to stay on routine and, um, you know, keep our sanity, inshallah. And the kids, you know, it works really good with kids because there's cute little check boxes that throughout the day, they can just check it off and, you know, proceed throughout their day and make sure that they're doing everything that's on the list. Another good um, freebie printable that we have is we came up with 30 days of good deeds for Ramadan. And it's something that Suha mentioned previously about the advent calendar. So you can print these off, cut them out, put them in like a 30 day countdown type of thing. And every day pull it out for those, the kids that are not fasting, they can perform that um, good deed. And inshallah, that's, they get a reward after that. And, and that's their form of fasting for the day where they're performing this good deed. Um, and even if they're fasting, they can still do it. You know, <laughs> the more the more good deeds that you get in, the better, inshallah. But or you can do it as a family as a whole. Like everyone can do that good deed together. And again, like it, you know, we made sure that those are things that they're able to do while still being um, able to keep the social distancing um, 
going on this year, inshallah. And we just have a couple of other free re resources that we thought would help, inshallah, you and your families um, just get the best Ramadan and have, you know, make the best out of this Ramadan or make this Ramadan the best yet, inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. And read. <laughs> and read, of course. And read, of course. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to um, finalize this with yeah. any questions, if anyone has. So, um, so I'm just going to see if anybody has any questions. I think we should have mentioned if anyone in the beginning has any questions as we're going through it you know, um, yeah. cover them in the end, but I'm not sure. So we'll give it a couple of minutes and if nobody has anything, then um, we thank you guys so much for, for coming and tuning in and, and we hope that you are able to get some benefit out of this inshallah um, and that you're able to take um, some of these tips to your home and your family and, uh, you know, to help you celebrate uh, this month. So one question is, how would you suggest that we connect with the community during this month while in quarantine? Um, so, you know, as we had mentioned, like one way to do it is to um, do some Zoom uh, meetings or, or schedule, I guess, um, Zoom iftars. If you, you can also start um, some uh, like WhatsApp groups or, or chat sessions. Um, and I think, it, it's also really helpful to uh, to keep in touch with people, as Seja had mentioned earlier, by calling and keeping in touch that way. You know, um, we're we we're we, we live in a time where we're so connected, um, or if we want to be, so we can text, we can call, we can um, do video chats. There's a lot of options that we can um, have if we if we just you know make the intention and set some time to do that, inshallah. Um, there's another another question. I don't know if you'd like to take that, Saja. Um, it is, what are ways to feel more connected when you and your spouse or family are working opposite shifts? Okay, so um, I think for me, when it comes to me and my husband, um, checking in on each other, ask them how their day's going, ask them how they feel during normal bond, um, ask them if there's anything they can do to help, you know, just check in on them, tell them that you're there for them. And, um, you know, you guys are a team. So when it's working different shifts, it's just that teamwork and communication, I think. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, So, Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, because we are actually like spending so much more time at home, um, on those times where, where you guys have um, an overlap in your schedule, make sure to take advantage of that um, and use that time. Sometimes it doesn't have to be, you know, several hours. Sometimes a 30 minute conversation that's really connected, that, that's really deep and that's just meaningful um, can have a much bigger impact. And so, yes, it might be hard if you guys are not able to have a start together as a family or, you know, you're not able to see each other as frequently, but still try to take advantage of any time that you have and, and make that intention and set, set that time aside for you guys to really, um, you know, connect. Um, so, yeah. And I don't know if there's any other questions, but um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, we really hope that you were, you know, that you benefited from this and that you can take some of this uh, with you uh, for this Ramadan, inshallah. Is there anything you want to say, Sasha? Um, I wish everyone a happy Ramadan and <laughs> you know, yeah. good luck, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak, inshallah. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in.